This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. During this case we'll be inserting a full contour zirconia crown on top of a wide platform implant. Here you can see it's blue signifying that it's a 5.5 millimeter wide implant with a wide platform connection. You'll notice that on this connection I was able to put on a peak healing abutment and normally these are supposed to line up with the facial surface. You have to have the uh, hex inside of the implant to line up with the kind of outer wall has to line up with the arch and so I was a little bit off here this is the first one I placed and so anyway we got this done and and still didn't make a difference so we're going to take this uh, peak abutment off so we can have a little look inside if you put a little pressure down on the torque wrench you can just keep uh, unscrewing it which is a fast way to get it off but um, once we have it unscrewed it's not going to come out like a light bulb comes out. You have to actually pull it off because the screw goes through the abutment and into the implant. Looking down inside, look at the tissue here. It's kind of sealing off this implant quite nicely. The platform shift is covered over by the soft tissue. So the patient is not really feeling any of this. They, she said that she didn't feel any of the insert, so it's kind of interesting. Now this is an OmniGrip screw, which is uh, a special screw used in this particular case. And it's actually the regular platform screw, but it still fits on the wide platform implant. So you can see when this goes through, it actually will hold the assembly together. So the zirconia is being held on the titanium adapter, which is going to go into the patient's mouth. So it's not held together by cement, it's held together by the screw pressure. So as I take this, I can carry the whole assembly to the back of the mouth quite easily. Ideally, you should put a little bit of floss on this and it'll make your life easier. I just kind of have the patient tipping their head a bit towards me. So the screwdriver is not going to fall out anyway. So anyway, we put this in and um, we actually can test the bite at this time. But I like to usually take an x-ray. So I just lightly screw it down at first and I'll take the x-ray. One of the first things I notice on this is you can see this is up a little bit. So usually this is caused by a number of factors, but the three most common factors are a little bit of a heavy contact mesial or distal, some soft tissue issues, or either some bone contact. So this will hold the abutment up and can make this little gap. All of mine was I had to screw it down a little bit tighter. You can see once I did this that the x-rays look great. What you'll also notice is this is a solid piece of zirconia. So there's no kind of porcelain added on this, so it's going to be a very strong and uh, very durable crown. So we use the OmniGrip driver in the torque wrench, and this is, can be taking out the uh, UniGrip driver. We can put this assembly into the uh, torque wrench, and then you can tighten your implant crown down. So we're tightening this, this down to 35 Newton centimeters, which is the final torque on this particular crown. You can see here I'm getting up to 35 newtons and uh, that should not affect the screw whatsoever. So look at how it's stuck in the screw. This is because it's an OmniGrip system, which is great for working in the posterior aspect of the mouth because you can see that it's going to uh, allow you to kind of be in a, an area that you can tighten things and not worry about dropping them. So if you look at this, you can see the zirconia as it goes inside. If I rotate a little bit more, there's the OmniGrip screw. It's a blue color if you look inside. You have to make sure you use the proper driver when you're tightening this or loosening it or you can strip this. This channel is usually filled in with a bit of uh, sterile cotton. So I'm going to place a couple in this so just in case I have to get this out ever I can go in and unscrew the crown and uh, either repair it or... So repairing it you can add porcelain to it. This is what we do all the time when we make a porcelain fuse to zirconia crown. So if you need to add to the contact you can do that with porcelain. If you need to add to uh, make it so it's going to have better occlusion, you can also add. But normally these are coming back quite nice. They're computerized uh, and uh, CAD CAM made. So you're able to look at the occlusion prior to putting it in. Now you do have to check your excursions, making sure that it's not hitting there. I like to have my occlusion so that the lingual on the uh, upper cusp is hitting the central fossa of the lower tooth and uh, the buccal cusps are not hitting at all when I go into excursions. So working and non-working interferences are all removed and try to have the canine guiding this particular case. In this case we're going to actually have groove function. 
So try to get the, the buccal cusp out of contact for this occlusion. So she says it feels good. This is on the initial try of uh, before using articulating paper, but I'll also go back in and use articulating paper to check it. What you'll notice is the patient had zero pain when we went to put this crown on because the peak abutment was there. It shaped the tissue enough and gave enough volume of space that I'm able to put in a pretty generous sized crown which is going to stop having uh, food trapping around this particular system because if the implant is too small or in the wrong position, like for instance not deep enough or too far away from a tooth, then what you're going to have is food trapping around it. Here you can see that the contact in the embrasure is actually perfect. It's not going to allow things to be trapped down around this particular tooth. So it's going to be ideal for posterior wear. Plus this crown is double the strength. So we can have uh, a lot of strength because it's a 1400 megapascal tensile strength on zirconia. The implant itself, the 5.5, has a double strength over its uh, regular platform size. So this is getting into a real strong predicament and we were able to use this so we know that it's going to be a great long-term solution. So we're adding just some uh, standard composite. You can use your own uh, particular composite that you like. Uh, I typically will kind of use a PFI and just kind of shape it. I'll also touch it with my finger sometimes to give it a little bit of um, kind of a natural feel. And um, I call it my finger plugger. So you can see here I'm just kind of shaping it. Plus on this particular PFI there's also a posterior kind of rounded plugger which helps to shape it. So rather than having two blades on the posterior, I prefer to have this uh, rounded blade and uh, it makes it so that it's easier to shape the tissue back there. So any excess can be wiped off and then we'll cure this. Now sometimes I'll have the patient bite into this just prior to curing as well. So you can make sure that the final anatomy of this is, is actually uh, shaped to the opposing cusp. So it's um, a very easy procedure. The uh, dental assistant is going to light cure this and we can see that uh, then the patient will be ready to test the final bite. So after a few light cures then this is pretty much ready. We'll take a couple pictures and have a look at it. You can see how beautiful it looks. So this is a great option for the patient. It's got uh, full contour zirconia, so 1400 megapascals very appropriate for the occlusion that's going to occur in this particular area of the mouth uh, generating 250 pounds of pressure up to a thousand pounds on clenchers and this is going to be able to withstand this type of force so instead of a gold crown this is a, a crown that doesn't cost the weight of the gold so we don't have to worry about that so it is something that's going to be in my mind replacing many of the gold restorations that are going on implant particular zones because of this uh, particular cost factor and the fact that it has the 1400 megapascal strength. Plus you have to factor in the fact that uh, many patients want to have a white option. So this is certainly a white option. It comes in eight different shades so you can pick the shade based on this and you can actually stain and glaze it and you could add some porcelain to it by doing a cutback technique if you wanted to do so and uh, so I think it's going to be a real winner for patients. We check the occlusion and uh, just make sure that it's perfect. It's actually sitting on the composite a little bit so we're just going to make sure that that's out of the way. So I think that you're going to see a lot of these restorations done. The lab takes less time to do it so that uh, they don't have to have someone adding porcelain on one of their masters. It doesn't have to be uh, working on this particular crown. You have to have someone that has a good idea of occlusion so that they can generate this to be in the ideal occlusal, occlusal pattern. So here it is. It looks fantastic and uh, very happy with the outcome. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry.